That's good, Robin. Great. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, we're we're going to be looking in the next half an hour just at um, a few things that um, Norman's asked me to just talk about. And I'm going to cover things like um, a, a brief history of, of who we are and, and then look more specifically and tying in with what Norman's just shared with his slide, where, where does your water come from? And then touching on what are our current resource positions and then talk about what we do as a company and what you can do to um, think differently about how we use and how we protect our water resources and how we can be more efficient. And then, of course, as James was saying, there's, there's an opportunity for questions at the end. Uh, a little bit about me, as, as Norman said, I'm a, a chartered engineer and scientist. I've been at SCS Water for 16 years. I started in the networks team, so responsible for the team um, who looked after the water mains and came out and did uh, inspections at customer properties if they had a problem. I'm now more focused on the water quality, the regulation, working closely with our, my operational colleagues to ensure that the water that comes out of your tap is always, use the word wholesome, is always good for you to drink um, and is not of a condition where you have to phone us and say um, there's something gone wrong. It does happen, but when it does happen, we hope that we can sort it out rapidly and, and respond to your concerns and queries um, as quickly as we can. And I'll look into um, Micah's query um, tomorrow morning and get a response back to her if those who were on the call earlier, um, she was asking about a hole that's been dug by the company. I don't know it in depth, but we'll come back to you and let you know. So coming on to the, the history of SES Water. But before that, the water company is, um, the water industry is a, a very wide and very, um, it, it, it's created by a number of different companies. There's 17 water companies spread across the, uh, the United Kingdom, um, in, not including Scotland, so Wales and England. Um, we, as SES Water, are the smallest left um, water-only company. We'd, we'd, we're not responsible for the sewerage element of, of water. Um, so we're responsible for cleaning, uh, uh, taking water out of the ground, cleaning it, treating it, putting it into the pipes, so that every morning when you turn your tap on to brush your teeth, make yourself a cup of tea, um, the water is there for you. Um, to, to um, use for whatever purposes you need to use it for. Our activities are very highly regulated. Um, be, because we're a monopoly, you at the moment as a domestic customer cannot choose to get your water from Thames Water, Southern Water, or another one of the water companies. So our activities are very highly regulated. Our water bills are set five years in advance and a regulator off what is responsible for the, the, the funding of, of what we're allowed to charge our customers. The Environment Agency are responsible for um, the, the environment and the catchment and the amount of water we abstract. And every, every bit of water that we abstract from the environment, we have to pay a charge to the Environment Agency for, for doing that. So it's important for us to make sure that we don't have a lot of waste and a lot of um, unnecessary usage um, because we get charged on that. Um, and of course, they're protecting their, their, the environment, protecting the, the catchment. And that's something that we have a very high priority for as a company when we look at our company purpose and we want to enhance the environment and enhance the, um, the, the area that we are taking water from and we want to improve that. And the, the, the regulator that I am personally um, very closely um, work alongside is the Drinking Water Inspectorate. They, they are responsible for making sure that the quality of the water we produce is, is, um, is, meets the regulations and not only meets the regulations, is it meets all our customer expectations as well, because um, we want our customers to be satisfied with the water that we produce and we, and we give um, on a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we expect that water to be there for you to use. If for the un 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 unusual circumstance where you do have to contact us, we, we hope that we can resolve your concerns and your queries 
um, and, and come out and see you, take any samples if that's necessary. But if you don't feel that we are responding to your concerns seriously, you do have a, um, a, another um, body called the Consumer Council for Water, and they represent the interests of customers. So they're the three regulators and the, um, the other body, Consumer Council for Water, that represent your, your needs. So a few facts about SES water. Here, here's a map of our area. We stretch all the way up to um, the edge of the, the underground network in Morden. Um, so right into the, the edges of um, the urban area of, of Morden, Worcester Park. Um, I personally live in Belmont, which is part of Sutton. So I'm a, I'm a resident and, a, and I receive water from SES water. We come all the way down to our, our largest customer, Gatwick Airport in the south. Um, and we supply Hawley um, and going across to the, um, the west, we supply the, um, the, the areas of Leatherhead, Oxshot, Cobham, um, and there's some very high, um, high usage properties in that area um, that use a, a lot of water and put, um, put, put, put quite a strain on our water network because they use quite a lot of water in our, in our Cobham, Oxshot, Stoke, Dabenham area. And then out into our eastern area, we have our one surface water reservoir, Bow Beach, which is near Edenbridge. It's a much more rural area, um, a lot more farms, a lot more agriculture, um, and, that's our, and that's our surface water area. So that's the area we supply. It's getting on for about 300,000 um, people, um, or sorry, properties, 300,000 properties, and that's just around the, um, three quarters of a million people that we supply um, 160 million litres of water every single day um, to, to you, um, a resident um, of SDS or a, 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 someone who receives our water. To do that, we use water or we abstract water um, from eight treatment works dotted across our area. Currently, we use seven treatment works. The one that's right in your area, Clifton's Lane, is our emergency treatment works. It's a very small one. Um, that, that is only used at times of drought or when our water resources hit a certain trigger. Um, and I'll come on to water resources later on. We didn't have to bring that treatment works into supply this year. We didn't hit the lower trigger of our drought plan. But um, we have, so we have seven operational treatment works of varying sizes spread across our, across our area. We're bordered by some much larger water companies. So you can see on the map, there's Thames Water um, that um, border us to the north and, and to the east, um, to the Guildford area. Um, and then we're also bordered by Southern and Southeast Water and in the top, top left, um, Affinity, Affinity Water. So some quite large companies um, border us, but we, as I say, only look at the clean drinking water uh, for, for, for yourselves. So a bit more about the history. We're, we're, we're made up by an amalgam of, of lots of um, local water supplies. Um, in the bottom left, you'll see um, the Dorking Water Act from 1869. Uh, and, and that act was a, an act for better supplying with water, the parish of Dorking. Um, and, and, and it's fascinating reading some of the, the old literature of, of how, how our company came into being. So we can trace our, um, as it says here, we can trace our origins back to the mid 19th century, uh, about 1862, uh, I think that's the, the date that um, we use as a, a starting point, um, when Victorian engineers began to supply water into people's homes. You can see some of the old pictures in the, the bottom right hand corner of, of the, the type of guys who used to go out and, and make sure that the water was coming out of people's taps. And um, as, as we started to lay water mains up to people's properties, uh, they, they would have been doing that. Two, two key dates is um, in 1996 was when um, Sutton District Water in the north of our area merged with East Surrey Water, which was at the bottom, um, the southern part of our area, and we became one company. We became Sutton and East Surrey Water. Um, and, and that's how we've remained to date. Uh, there was, you may, you, you recognise the logo. In 2017, um, we, we rebranded. Some people don't like rebranding, but um, we decided to modernise and we've, we've dropped the Sutton and East Surrey 
Um, I'm not sure whether I completely agree with that, um, but because we are a local water company for local people, but we're called SES Water. We still trade under Sutton and East Surrey Water. Um, but I, I pride myself in the fact that I'm I work for a local company supplying the needs of local people. And I think that's, that's very important when we're a small company, we know what's going on around around our area. Um, and that's something we we really do look at, and we we take pride in the fact that um, we we can we can treat you personally. So some just finally on the history, um, we we were laying water mains to cross the River Mole is a, is the top top right. Um, I'm not sure in the top right whether I really approve of the health and safety of some of those individuals that are walking across the shuttering as we as we blocked off the River Mole to lay our large diameter trunk mains. Those trunk mains are still in use. They are the, they are the two of the two of the mains that we laid in 1934 to take water from one side of the River Mole to the other to supply the areas that, that needed it in in the Leatherhead Ashton area. Um, and unfortunately, you can see in the bottom bottom that we we did have bursts in 1955. And we still have bursts. But interestingly, the, the the old vehicle that you can see, if I could zoom in, and I, I haven't got a photo of it zoomed in, we were talking in 1955 about um, a water shortage and making sure people used water wisely, um, because that, at that time it was a period of, of dryness, and we wanted people in in 1955 to be concerned about the water they were using. So it's not a problem that's come about in the last few years. It's been around for many years. And, and that's why we love talking about it still. So we've, we've moved on from burst mains in 1955, and we've moved on from the, the, the laying water mains um, without much health and safety. We take a pride in the way we do things now. You can, in the top right, we, we sample our water regularly um, to ensure that it meets the standards and the regulations that are required. We, we have a modern fleet of vehicles, um, many of them electric, um, so that we um, can, can become carbon neutral as, as, as soon as 2030, I believe that's the plan. Unfortunately, we still have bursts. The one in the bottom picture is when a road surfacing contractor decided to take his JCB and drill a big hole through the center of one of our trunk mains in the in, in northern part of Sutton. It was a very problematic um, shutdown because you can't just close a water main. Um, closing a water main means the water starts to move differently around the network. Um, and if we'd have done that, we could have caused them all manner of water quality problems. And this was on a Sunday afternoon. I remember it well in probably about 15 years ago now that it caused um, a lot of concern because the water that was um, going 30, 40 um, feet into the air was then going on to the St. Helier rain tr um, railway track. Um, and it, it was causing a challenge because it was flooding the railway track. But we couldn't turn it off until we were safe. Um, to ensure that our customers would remain supplied when that happens. So that gives you a bit of a, a bit of a potted history. We no longer, thankfully, lay wooden water pipes. Um, you, you see this um, in Bourne Hall in, in Yule. There is a little museum at the top of Bourne Hall. Um, and this was one of the water pipes that was um, taken out of the ground in that area. So historically, we laid water pipes um, in, in wood and we didn't go to people's houses. The picture on the right, you might recognise from Pump Corner in Dorking. Um, that is how people used to go and collect their water. Thankfully, now we lay water up to people's properties. We use modern materials. This is one of our plastic pipes running down the high street of Worcester Park a number of years ago. And one of our um, managers who, who is responsible for taking, taking our water samples, again, to make sure that the water that comes at your ha um, into your house meets all the standards and right quality. So moving on to the, our water resources, where does our water come from? The majority of our water is stored deep underground. 85% um, is stored in aquifers, which are underground, um, and that's called groundwater. So it falls on the ground, soaks in and seeps in, um, and then we pump it out of the ground to, to use. 15% of our water comes from our reservoir, um, our surface water at Bow Beach. That takes water out of the River Eden at certain times of the year. We're only allowed to pump um, in a small pumping window. So this time of the year is critical um, for rain so that we can fill fill our reservoir 
um, during the winter months when we were allowed to abstract water and fill our reservoir. In Betchworth, you guys are fortunate that um, you have the ability to, to have a, a, a mixed water supply. So if our groundwater is quite low, you may be receiving water from our Bow Beach treatment works. And if our reservoir is quite low at Bow Beach, you can receive water from our northern area, from our Elmer area, um, and you get a blended water. And, and we'll come on to that in a little bit more detail shortly. So you can see that green colour um, and you can see Betchworth in the centre of that. And, and you receive water um, from either our Elmer treatment works in Leatherhead or um, Bow Beach um, in Chiddingston and um, down near Edenbridge. Two pictures um, just to show the type of thing I'm talking about. Our Bow Beach Reservoir and, and a borehole that you don't see very much. The water is all stored underground. It comes up out of the ground and gets pumped to our treatment works to, to, um, to treat and, and make um, in, to put it into a condition where it is safe to give you. So we disinfect it, we take any particles out of it, and we add some chemicals to make sure that um, the, if you have got any lead pipe work, um, that will not affect you as a customer. Um, so we we add we add things to the water. It doesn't just fall out of the sky and we put it into your taps. Um, there's a very complex process in between the two, um, and that is something that I, I, I'll hopefully get across to you during during this talk. So when when you stand back and look, um, you think. Crikey, there's a lot of water mains. I, I shared the slide earlier and said um, there's three and um, it said on there there's three and a half thousand kilometers of water main. That is the equivalent of going, um, I think if you said you were going to go to Egypt um, and laid all our pipes end to end, you, you that, that is about where you get to. Um, so if you drive down a road, if you drive into Rygate, there's a water main there. If you drive into a cul-de-sac, there's a water main there. If you drive along the A25, for the majority of the way, there is a water main there. And across Headley Heath, there's a water main. So there's a lot of water mains, um, three and a half thousand kilometers of them of varying diameters that we have to maintain to make sure that you keep um, a, a supply of water at all times. So Betchworth, right in the middle there with the red star, you have, as, as I, I just briefly said, you have the opportunity to get um, your water from our Elmer treatment works in the, the northeast and our Bow Beach treatment works. So it travels along um, large diameter mains. It actually gets stored um, in a large concrete tank on top of Box Hill. Um, as you go, as you um, go up Pebble Hill um, and then you turn towards Box Hill, you may see on the right um, uh, a, a field which generally got horses in, but then you'll see a fenced area and uh, it, you can see a mound um, with some, some lids on the top that uh, are hatches and, and that is where our Headley, water, um, Headley Reservoir is. Um, and that's what supplies you um, on a daily basis with water. Um, it's got a little label on the gate, so I'm not giving any trade secrets away that says SCS Water. Um, and but that is one of the one of our large reservoirs that supplies supplies you with water. Our water from um, Bow Beach is stored in Outwood near Outwood Village, uh, and then that's pumped along the trunk mains to get to Betchworth. So that, that's where your water comes from. But I just wanted to show this map and all the different colours are all our different water mains to show that um, we, um, we, we know where our water is going. And when I talk about leakage in a minute, um, it, it's very important that you can understand the different colours because we measure the water going into certain areas so that we can ID, um, find out where, where there might be water being used that we're not expecting it to be used. So. Just remember that picture and just think when you're driving, driving into either Dorking or Rygate tomorrow, um, think about how many things that we have to maintain and that we have to look after on a regular basis. So one of our challenges is that the population in the southeast is going up and up and up. We are, we are, as I said, we are, we are approaching 300,000 properties. That's the light blue line on, on the map. And people are still using water. What we've been able to do since about 1995 is control the amount of water we supply to customers. And that's through um, solving leakage, that's through customer education, 
that's through water efficiency um, and that's through our uh, extensive things that we do like replacing pipes and pressure managing areas to ensure that people aren't using and we're not wasting too much water. So you can see since about 1995, we've been able to stabilize the amount of water we use to around the 160 million litres. And we're, we're, we're one of the areas in the country that use a lot of water. It's, we individually use about 150 litres of water per person per day. Um, so that is our challenge as we move forward into getting customers to think differently about how they use water. Now on to the, the rainfall. Um, I think Norman shared that in one of the, the, the slides on, the, on his slide. One of the key things is we rely 100% on, on rainfall. Um, and um, when we don't get enough rainfall, that's when we fall into drought. You can see on this map, it's quite stark as we look at the, the rainfall for 2021 and 22. There's not many green lines that are above the average. We know November has been exceptionally wet. That has been great news for us as a water company because that's really been the first month since February that has gone above average rainfall. September was about bang on average, but before that you can see where the, the problems that we were having, it was not until um, October 21 when we last had a large amount of rainfall. And that is the challenge. We rely 100% on, on our rainfall. The good news about it, it raining in November is that we can start filling our res reservoir at Bow Beach. You can see that steep blue line. Um, so you can see that in November we've started to pump and our reservoir got down from almost a record low of around 40% um, and is now sitting just over 80%. And we would hope in the next two weeks to a month with a few more days of rain and heavy rain that we'll be able to fill that and go into 2023 in a much stronger position. Uh, so that's um, on the condition that we get 100% of the long-term average rainfall. Uh, but if you remember, we only get 15% of our rain, um, of our water from the rain that falls in the catchment of Bow Beach and fills ba um, our Bow Beach Reservoir. The majority comes from deep underground. We, we look at our, the levels in our boreholes. We've got, um, we've got reference boreholes where we can measure and um, along with the Environment Agency, we measure the level in the boreholes. What has been encouraging in the last couple of weeks, you'll just see the blue line on this graph has just started to turn up. The rainfall that we've had in November has meant that our aquifers are starting to fill up again. We, we use the word recharge, but they're, they're starting to fill up. So if you imagine a big sponge, um, then, then it's now filling up and getting wetter and wetter now that the, the dry ground has been recharged and it, the what's called the soil moisture deficit has been eradicated. So the ground is wet. So any water that now falls is falling and is helping the, the aquifers fill up or recharge. So hopefully over the next um, few months, as we head into um, the early part of 2023, we'll see that blue line creeping above the long-term average. Um, if it doesn't, we will be, um, we will have some problems next year. Doesn't mean we'll have a hose pipe ban, doesn't mean we'll be in, um, in drought, but we do need that line to, to turn up and become, um, become up to the, the long-term average. The reason that SES didn't have a hose pipe ban this year was we didn't hit our lower drought triggers. If this line had dropped much further, as it did for other water companies in the southeast, we, we would have had to bring in some measures which included customer education, which included bringing our Clifton's Lane treatment works in line. Um, but we didn't hit those drought triggers, so we weren't allowed to um, and we didn't have the need to um, bring in more extreme measures, thankfully, for our customers. Many of you will remember um, 1976. How does how does 2022 um, compare? 
very similarly from a, from a water resource position. We've used this in some of our literature um, as we promote um, as we promote about water resources. Um, many of you will, as I say, will remember it. And, and this was a cartoon that made me smile a number of years ago um, when, when during the 2013, 20 um, droughts that um, we resurrected this from, from 1970s when um, it was some, someone coined the slogan, save water, bath with a friend. I'm, I'm not promoting that at all, but it, it, it just raises awareness with people um, and um, brings, brings to people's forefront about using water wisely. So where were we? Our reservoirs were, were nearly at record lows. Um, we put out, uh, marketing out there and, and publicity to say we're in drought. The last time we did this, you may remember, was about 2013. The day we bought a hose pipe ban in, in 2013, it started raining. Uh, it was a uh, prayers were answered and um, it, it rained and rained and rained. And we saw pictures like this in central London that Thames Water paid for a lot of advertising to say we are in drought and people were there with their um, umbrellas up um, and sheltering from the rain. The fact that it's raining, as I showed in the earlier graphs, doesn't mean that we're immediately out of drought. It takes a long time for our water resources to recover and um, to, to recuperate to levels where we are out of a drought scenario. But drought's not the only thing that we're concerned about as a water company. Um, recently, as uh, 2013, 2014, um, we experienced flooding, um, and that is just as much risk as drought um, for the, from a water quality point of view, because um, there's all manner of sewers that could overflow and affect the boreholes. Um, there's, there's all manner of um, maybe tanks that could start um, leaking um, and being swamped. There's oil from vehicles that could start to wash into rivers. Um, and, and here you'll see the one way system at Leatherhead swamped in water. And in the centre of that is an island of Leatherhead pumping station. That's how we use to, to pump water to the areas of Leatherhead, Ashted and onwards to Headley to supply you um, and uh, as customers of Betchworth. We take water from Elmer Treatment Works um, and then pump that to Headley. So not only is drought a concern, but um, you can see here, flooding is a big concern for us and can cause a lot of damage. And the, the bottom pictures are when one of our treatment works in Kenley, um, so quite near Purley, uh, became, um, all, uh, became almost inundated and we had to put flood defences up. And this is when Boris Johnson was the mayor of London. He came out to make sure we were doing everything right. He listened and then went away. Didn't do much, but it was um, it was good to have a political presence. And not only from him, but from the local councillors, from um, the, the head of Croydon Council. They came out to make sure that the, the work that we were doing and the work that we were working with the fire service, the police, um, to ensure that we were protecting the local residents from floodwaters, as well as maintaining a water supply at the same time. So it's just the, the re role reversal. Not only is there drought, there's flooding. So briefly, because I'm, I'm aware that I want to leave plenty of time for questions, what are we as a company doing to conserve supplies? And I'm gonna to touch on these things, that we're controlling leakage, we're, we're laying water mains, we're doing work at our treatment works, we're in increasing the amount of meters, and then we are trying to promote water efficiency. One of the pictures I wanted to share was this one. Um, this is Cheam Village, and there was a patch of water. And you, you think it's right in the middle of the crossroads at Cheam Village, and you think, where on earth do you start to dig? Um, because the water just finds its natural way to the surface. And we would not be um, held very highly if we just started digging and we were there for two weeks um, thinking, oh, the water's not there, let's dig a bit further. When you look at the water mains of that location, um, it's very confusing because you think, which main is that leak on? So that's when we start using our very sophisticated electronic equipment. Um, we, use, um, we use listening devices and we can pinpoint exactly where that leak was on the water main. We had a concern from the local councillor at the time um, that we would be blocking the high street um, and the crossroads for a number of hours and a number of days, but we did it all overnight. 
and we got a really positive comment on on I think it was the Twitter feed or um, on one of their social media pages that said Sutton and East Surrey managed to finish their work just in time. Wow, well done and thank you. So we sometimes get quite a lot of criticism for roadworks, for holes, for delays. Um, but we, we try, we're not, we want to be in and out as quickly as possible and to minimise disruption. Um, I just wanted to show that it's, it's, it's hard to know exactly where to dig, but with our modern um, technology, we, we are well on the way of being an industry leader in our smart networks for SES Water. Something we're proud of as being a small company, but we're an industry leader at being able to know how to manage our leakage. We have one of the lowest leakage rates in the industry because of the way we can monitor and find leaks and fix them really quickly. So I talked about mains replacement, no longer are we laying elm trees hollowed out and stuck together with tar, we're, we're laying modern plastic ductile iron um, pipe work, um, so whatever is the best material for the ground that we're, um, we need to lay, um, that is what we're, we're laying. But it's not always as simple as laying a water main. When we were in Dorking, we came across um, multiple skeletons on a Saxon burial ground. So work was halted whilst that was investigated by the local archaeological society. So we do have some obstacles to overcome. Not only is it um, digging highways up when we're going through fields, um, there's the environmental impact. We need to make sure we're returning it to a, a state better than we left it. Um, and we need to take due care and attention when we come across um, unusual um, obstacles, such as a, an uncharted burial ground. That's rare, but it was an interesting one I thought you'd like to see a photograph of. So coming on to water efficiency and, and where, you can, where you can help. Water, as you know, as you've heard, is not a limitless resource. We all use about 150 litres of water a day. As I showed you in one of the graphs earlier, our population is increasing and um, that, that only means that more water may be need, being needed to be used. So we need to start using, each of us start using less water. By doing so, helps your, your energy bills because you're not heating the same amount of water. Um, it reduces carbon emissions. And ultimately, we would like to say it reduces your water bill because you're using less water if you're, if you're on a meter. So just to, to, to give, give you some thoughts about where you use your water at home. So 25% of the water we treat for you to drink goes straight down the toilet. Another 26% of the water we treat for you to drink and me to drink and us all to use for cooking and washing, we put straight down the drain and the plugs through baths and showers. Next is the clothes washing. So we're, we're all ready. Um, and then in the bathroom sink, through washing, through anything, through just washing our faces. Um, so we're already over 75% of the water we treat um, for drinking water purposes hasn't entered your mouth or been used for washing food um, for cooking. So, and then the other things like water, using water outside the dishwasher and leakage, um, we estimate only 15% of the water that we treat for drinking water purposes is actually consumed or is used at the kitchen sink. It's quite astonishing really. And that's why we want to start thinking differently about being a bit smarter um, about our water resources, using things like a water butt, using um, things that don't require us to use treated drinking water. I was really pleased to see on your, um, on your website that you were promoting how to make the most of every drop. Um, the, th it's quite an old document, but it's got some really useful tips in. What I would say is, um, it would be great if you could promote the the website get fit, get water fit. Um, the, the link is there um, and that is on our website. You can go in, you can look at a few video clips, you can do a survey to see how you can improve your water usage. And I really, really ask you to consider that to think how you can use water differently. One of the things that I'm hopefully with with um, with you guys pre preaching to the converted in that um, if you have got more bedrooms in your house than people, 
you would probably save water, save money by being on a water meter. It's the fairest way to pay, in my view, and it does encourage less waste and it is free. We're in a process across our company area um, of installing water meters in something called our universal metering program. And, and therefore, by the end of 2025, we're looking to a majority of our customers to, to have a water meter. Two thirds, just over 60, 66%, I think it's getting on towards 70% now, are already metered. Um, and we say that being on a meter has the potential to use about 15% less water. And that means you're using less water, but that means that we're taking less water out of the environment, out of the rivers, out of the aquifers, and that helps local wildlife, local streams, um, as it says there. So please look at our website if you're not on a water meter and do consider it. So what can you do? Um, this is one of the last slides. Maybe. One one yeah. things that I'd like you to do is if you have a shower, think about having a, a shorter shower. Um, the average time is seven minutes. We challenge our children when they come to Bow Beach and have the education talk to have a four minute shower. Um, so that is something that they take a little sand timer um, and they can use less water um, when they're in the in the shower. Or we say have a shallower bath turn your tap off when you brush your teeth. I'd hope to hope that none of you leave your taps running when you're brushing your teeth or when you're washing vegetables. Run a bowl and wash the vegetables in there. So some of the things here are, are handy hints. One of the things I do want to pick up on is as we head towards winter, we hope we don't have a beast from the east or something like that, but check that your pipes are lagged. Water can cause so much damage in properties. Um, so to check that your pipes are lagged prevents bursts. Um, it will prevent a lot of um, damage in your property um, if your pipes are adequately lagged internally so that um, it just pro protects you from um, the, the dangers of that. And one of the key things there is to know where your stopcock is. Um, it's, there's either a stopcock under your kitchen sink um, or there's one out at the boundary of your property, um, which is the one we own. But if you need it in an emergency, know where it is to turn the water off. And the other final couple of things there, um, only flush when you need to or use your dual flush on the toilet. Um, in, the, in the summer, we're now out of that, but put a jug of water in the fridge um, and, and maybe for your garden, consider some dr drought tolerant plants. That type of information that's on this slide is on our website. If you go to our Get Water Fit, go to our water saving page, there is a booklet on our water saving page that talks about these water saving tips um, that you, you may want to just put a link to on your water page on the on the Betchworth website. Uh, that hopefully has given you a whistle stop tour in the last 40 minutes or, or so of, of, of how we take the water out of the ground, how we treat it, how we are doing our bit to, to maintain the, the level of water that is abstracted from the environment. We want to use that water um, wisely. We want you to use the water wisely so that our environment, uh, the nature that is around us, the wildlife is improved by, by what we are all doing. So I'd like to open it up for questions. I'm sure there's um, that stimulated a few of you. Um, so if I can't answer them, um, unfortunately, um, Tom from our communications team was unwell, so he couldn't join us, but I will make a note. Um, and if I can't answer it, I'd hope to think I can, but I will make sure I make a note and, and come back to you.